Hi guys. It is a fine spring, well it is a summer morning I guess. Here, at Bugs in a Jar Farm on this lovely, it is Saturday morning, June 26, 2021, and the little dog and I, we need to head to the Amish Lumber Mill one more time to get the siding for our tiny house here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, so. Come spend a night in the tiny house and well Before I go good lord guys just trying to figure out you know ten years ago trying to find any One mention of a collapse of a planet Was my biggest job and now trying to figure out what to start with and I could start with the number one story on the planet For the third time this week the number one story on the planet Sea level rise due to climate change eyed as contributing factor in Miami building collapse. And uh, of course, the first time that I and a bunch of other people heard about this collapse, uh, the obvious one of the causes could be sea level rise. Now, I personally do not think this particular case. It was built on reclaimed wetlands, which virtually 100% of that strip of condos is down there. My guess it has to do with that, but come back in 10 years. You know, it would be nice if, uh, if the mainstream media gave one one hundredth the attention to the collapse of a planet than they're giving to the collapse of one building on a planet. Good Lord, three of the top six stories on planet Earth this morning are about a building collapse in Miami. Just as I say, come back in 10 years and let's talk, um, let's talk about building collapses in Miami. Uh, all right, I'm just going to go through some headlines and figure out which one to... Uh, to uh, end up with, uh, I'm certainly not going to mention the C word, sea turtle was trying to nest until teens poured alcohol on it. Yep, how many uh, stories from the Pacific Northwest in California unprecedented heat wave in Pacific Northwest starts roasting the region. I love this. Uh, Western drought brings outbreak of grasshoppers to farmers. We have a, I guess, a biblical plague of grasshoppers, of locusts swarming. You know, usually they come out in about September, but they are here in June. Now, I can swear that locust plague over there in Sub-Saharan Africa was because of the heavy rains that it has been so wet. And now we're hearing because it's so dry. So we have uh, locusts and we have a plague of rattlesnakes talking about how the rattlesnakes are coming up to people's houses looking for something to drink. Be careful getting in your pool in California. Uh, a million stories on the new UFO report, this very disappointing UFO report. So guys, I do have to rescind any prediction I made, unfortunately, about them talking about an alien invasion. Uh, on the 4th of July. It's what the, the angle that they're playing up, uh, which, which again might be true, is that these things, they have 143 unexplained sightings. They have no clue what these things are, but of course the narrative now that is being massaged is not the space aliens, but that they are a threat to national security, that somebody is building these things on this planet. 
And uh, so this is called Getting Funding for the Space Department. Isn't that, what did Trump call his new military department? The Space Wars or something. What this narrative is, is to gather support for spending billions or trillions of dollars on uh, taking the U.S. military into outer space to fight those whoever they are, but they're not pushing the alien agenda. Uh, okay. Drought indicators in western U.S. flash warnings of the big one. And then right next to the, we, we have rattlesnakes and locusts swarming because of the drought, and then in Texas, invasive worms emerging after Texas rains. All right, we could certainly go with this one. Miscalculation in Russian cat and mouse game could lead to full-blown war. Warren's army chief. This is uh, this guy in England uh, talking about how a miscalculation, otherwise known as a mistake, could set off World War III more easily than anything else. Um, this would be an interesting one to tear apart. How to classify planet Earth is talking about these land-based satellites that are getting more and more common in all of these doomsday stories like they're doing with the California drought. Hey, you know how they'll get the satellite image of what Lake Mead looked like over, you know, as it's falling and stuff. Pretty interesting stuff, but good Lord, trying to settle in on one. Well, you will not believe this. Planet warming methane leaking from gas plants. Imagine that. Uh, planet warming methane leaking from gas plants. And, but guys, with all of them, good Lord, this is the one, not surprisingly, that Sam Mitchell settled on. We're going to head to Madagascar today for our chronicle of the collapse. Uh, how many times have I said, I usually don't use Madagascar, I usually use uh, Lagos, Nigeria, but you can pretty much throw a dart at Sub-Saharan Africa to get a snapshot of the future of the planet. There's some good old Associated Press buried down in the news. Madagascar droughts push 400 thousand people towards starvation. Hmm. Okay, does anyone want to guess if the O word shows up in this story? Dateline United Nations. The United Nations is now a dateline. The UN World Food Program says southern Madagascar is in the throes of back-to-back -back droughts that are pushing 400,000 people towards starvation and have already caused deaths from severe hunger. Lola Castro, WFP's regional director uh, in Southern Africa, said she has witnessed, quote, a very dramatic and desperate situation, close quote, during her recent visit to the Indian Ocean Island nation of 26 million people. So keep in mind, there's 26 million people in Madagascar. We're going to come back to this since nowhere in the story does the UN or the mainstream media come back to this little factoid. Obviously, we are going to come back uh, to this nation of 26 million people and pretend like Sam Mitchell uh, has, was putting his journalism degree being an editor at the AP. 
some obvious questions I might have asked my reporter to get. Okay, back to the story. Hundreds of adult and children were what she called wasted, and hundreds of kids, hundreds of children were skin and bone, and receiving nutritional support, which means receiving foreign aid. In 28 years working for WFP on four continents, Castro said she had, quote, never seen anything this bad, close quote, except maybe in 1998 in South Sudan. Don't even get me going on South Sudan. <clears throat> the UN and Madagascar's government are launching an appeal for $155 million to provide life-saving food to prevent a major famine, she said. Thousands of people have left their homes in rural areas and moved to more urban environments in search of food, she said. Beasley tweeted Friday that 400,000 people are, quote, marching toward starvation. 14,000 people are, quote, in famine-like conditions. And, quote, if we do not act as soon as possible, the number of people facing starvation will reach 500,000 in a few short months. <clears throat> quote, okay, this is a UN spokesperson explaining starvation in Sub-Saharan Africa. <clears throat> quote, families have been living on raw red cactus fruits, wild leaves, and locusts for months now. Finally, someone eating, you know, taking the UN's advice to start eating bugs. You know, here is a, here is a woman from the UN talking about how horrible it is that starving children in Sub-Saharan Africa are eating the locusts when it is the U.S., I'm mean, sorry, the U.N. recommending that we start eating bugs, then we start eating bugs, and what do they do? They complain about people having to eat bugs. But anyway, I'm getting into another rant. Quote, back to the quote from Ms. Beasley. <clears throat> this, this, you know, starvation is not because of war or conflict. This, you know, starvation, is because of climate change. <clears throat> we will get back to this in a moment. I'm not denying it's because of climate change. This is an area of the world that has contributed nothing to climate change, but now they are the ones paying the highest price, close quote. According to the uh, World Food Program, 1.14 million people in southern Madagascar do not have enough food, including 14,000 in catastrophic conditions, and this n number will double by October. Madagascar is the only country and, and I guess right now the only country, I guess they're saying in Sub-Saharan Africa, that is not in conflict, but still has people facing famine humanitarian catastrophe. And the Integrated Food Security Phase Classification uh, the inter Integrated Food Security Phase Classification in the Famine Humanitarian Catastrophe Phase. Yes. Uh, according to the IPC, which is a global partnership of 15 UN agencies and internationally humanitarian 
humanitarian organizations that uses five categories to measure food security. Madagascar now in the highest. Uh, so anyway, guys, you heard it here. Okay. Is this famine due to climate change? That uh, people from Madagascar had nothing to do with. Uh, my answer is probably so, but that does not mean uh, climate change is a contributing factor to this famine in Madagascar, but it, th this is just me. Okay, with my journalism degree, uh, if a reporter uh, brought this story to me, I would have a few questions. It took me 90 seconds to do this interview. My, I, uh, I simply googled two questions. What is the birth rate of, in Madagascar? The birth rate, which I question, uh, is 4.08, four births per women. So the average family in Madagascar uh, is four. Um, four uh, kids per women, and the other question, obviously, I would want to ask is what was Madagascar's population 20 years ago? The answer to that question is 15.7 million. Got it. It's called it 16 million people. 20 years ago, there were 16 million people in Madagascar. Today, there are 26 million people in, in Madagascar. You can see the uh, right here the the line. Here was Madagascar's. I wonder how long I've been talking to myself. Maybe I'm not talking to myself. I would like the, uh, I wish this little red light on the front of my camera. So this is, well, you can follow the hockey stick yourself. All right, so I, I, I don't know, guys. I only have a degree in journalism. I, I don't have a degree in math. So would someone point out the flaw in my logic? All right. There were 16 million people in Madagascar 20 years ago, and my guess is they were having stories like this 20 years ago when there were 16 million. They have added 10 million people to their population in 20 years, and let's say, let's say 500,000 people are facing starvation, so that means nine and a half million of the 10 million people who have been added to Madagascar's population are not facing starvation. So I'm going to jump to the next uh, ridiculous conclusion. So what logical fallacy am I suffering from? Okay, if the population of Madagascar was still only only 16 million instead of 26 million would a half million people be facing starvation right now uh, uh, that would be the question obviously nowhere are they going to touch this third rail uh, in this story because if you are a white man particularly with a southern accent suggesting that uh, maybe uh, if there were not 10 million people in Madagascar who should never have been born, that 500,000 of that additional 10 million people would not be facing starvation and Madagascar would not be holding out its hand for $155 million in foreign aid to feed uh, at least at least 400,000 people who should never have been born. Anyway, I'm just asking these questions, uh, wondering if uh, 
if YouTube will demonetize demonetize this video for asking the question, what is the real cause of starvation in, uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa? Is it climate change or is it too many people eating locusts and leaves? Anyway, I've got to wrap this up because the little dog and I, we need to head to the Amish lumber mill one more time for a little more planet nibbling to get our tiny house ready for occupancy at Bugs in a Jar. And now I, my fat, I've been eating, look how many locusts I have been eating. I have been eating so many locusts around here. You know, what's weird is there is not one cricket. I have not heard one cricket at Bugs in a Jar Farm this year. Not one single chirp. Firefly population seems to be good and healthy here. I'm glad to report uh, not one cricket chirping in the summer of 2021. And have I seen... I might have se I've seen a few bumblebees. I, I have not laid eye, just like last year, I have not laid eyes on a honeybee this summer and uh, not heard a cricket. So anyway, just chronicling that old collapse. Gotta go. Bye guys.